Hello and welcome to Transformed, a program where you get to witness firsthand how ordinary people are transformed with extraordinary power. I'm your host, Rebecca Mawini, and today we have with us special guest Ron Baker, who's going to be discussing with us how Christ has radically changed his life. Ron, thank you so much for joining us. Rebecca, it's a pleasure. So, Ron, before you share with us how you became a Christian, I'd love to hear how, you, how was your life growing up? Well, I was born on the 23rd of December 1930 in the Depression time in a little town called Kudal in the western part of New South Wales, Australia. And uh, my childhood was very, very shaky. I'm the eldest of six children mm -hmm. and um, it was very difficult during those years. Uh, I was a child that was always in trouble. I was consistently uh, getting either caned at school or when I went to school or I was consistently getting belted at home for, for doing wrong things and uh, my life was really screwed up as a child but years later when I did some research on my life I found out that I was rejected at birth. Mm. Um, my father apparently didn't want to have a child at that time, he was in the height of his football career and uh, my mother was a city girl, she was only about 17 years of age and, and it was a big ask for her to have a child at that age, I should imagine, looking back. And, and of course the difficult years, yes, they were very difficult years. And um, they were not only difficult at home, but they were difficult in the times that I went to school and I was very rebellious. I was always in and out of trouble and um, that was just my lifestyle as a child and that's the way it was. Mm. So when did you first hear about God or about Jesus? Well, I didn't really hear about the real God and the real Lord Jesus until 1959. I'd certainly heard of the swear name Jesus many, many times. I'd, um, the odd time I did go to church as a boy, uh, I certainly heard the name the Lord Jesus Christ, but who was he, another stranger? Mm -hmm. um, I had no idea who he was, or, uh, but um, when did I first um, become aware of who he is mm. was on the 1st of May 1959, with the night that my wife went to the Billy Graham crusade in Sydney and gave her life to Christ and came home and told me. Um, it was certainly just not a name when she told me, mm. it was somebody living inside of her a real person and that brought an awareness to me that there was something to this God bit. Yeah. So you weren't a Christian at that time? Oh no, no, no way. And, and when you, your wife came home and told you that she was a Christian, how did that make you feel? Oh, I reacted very violently. I was pretty drunk that night because I had a night off. I, for most of the crusade, I was a bus driver and we were driving busloads of people out to the crusade. And, uh, but when she came home, I'd been drinking, sitting, minding the children, drinking my alcohol. But when she told me, I reacted very violently. And um, I think that's one of the worst arguments we ever had in our married life. Mm. And we've got 59 years of marriage behind us now, but that was a violent reaction. And I, I, I look back and I think, well, it could have turned into a very, very ugly night, mm. really. But I knew that she was different. She was different. And, mm. and I've often said this, we went to bed that night, I was in bed with a different woman. <laughs> I really was, Rebecca. Yeah. I was in bed with a different woman. She wasn't, she wasn't the woman I went to bed with the night before. So, okay, so that was your first experience of mm. God. Did you have any other experience of the supernatural or the spiritual before that? I had a lot of uh, experiences in the supernatural in witchcraft, yes. Oh yes, definitely for, since I was the age of 12. And now when she gave her life to Christ, I'm 28 and a half years old. Mm. And um, yes, so from 12 to 20, that's what, 16 years of witchcraft. And uh, I knew what the supernatural world was all about. Mm -hmm. But when she came home, I I'd controlled her for first six years of our marriage. I could control my wife, manipulate her to do anything I wanted her to do. And, but when she came home that night and told me that she had given her life to Christ, yeah. I had no power over her whatsoever. Yeah. I'd lost all my power, all my right to intimidate her and to manipulate her, if mm. you like. She was different. 
And that power, that person that I know now as the lovely Lord Jesus ministering through God the Holy Spirit, he was in her for real. It was a miracle. It was instant transformation. And that's why you were angry that she made that I was angry. I tell you, I was very angry. So from someone who came from a very broken home, who was involved in witchcraft for a long time, how did you become a Christian? Well, what happened was, this was Friday night, the 1st of May. Mm -hmm. Then on the Saturday, I went to work at Brookvale Depot, where I worked, and I came home and I was on my way back to have a drink at the Manly Ringer League Club. And she came out and she said, instead of nagging, she said, don't hurry. I'll get you tea when you come home. And I, I thought, honestly, I thought this woman's sick. There's something wrong with her. Anyhow, for the Saturday and the Sunday I went to work and it bugged me. Why was she so different? Why, what had happened? What is this that's in her life now? And then on Monday I went to work and a Christian bus driver wanted me to change him shifts on the Tuesday so that he could take a busload of people out to the crusade. And I did his day shift. And I came home from work and he was the builder who had built our first home, who took Beryl to the crusade on Friday night. He's there begging me, begging me to go to the crusade on the Tuesday night. Here I am, sick from grog, drugs and all the rest of it. And I, he pleaded with me. He said, if I have to get down in the dirt and beg you to come. He said, will you come? Well, don't ask me how, because I don't know. I got in his car with his wife and we went out. We were late. We sat way up the top at the back of the showground and that night I sat there and I, in the spiritual warfare, I am fighting Billy Graham. I'm thinking that man has taken my wife from me. This religion, I'm going to really tear him apart in the spiritual world. And then after a while, I heard a voice that I'd never heard before in my life said, go. And I don't know how I got to the front I was way up the back of the Sydney showground. Whether angels carried me, what happened, I don't know. But I finished up down the front. The people had been there for a while. And Billy Graham, I was told later, had appealed for 10 minutes. He waited that night. He had the quiet thing, just as I am four times. He said, God is waiting for a man tonight. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to wait. And when I got down the front, all the counsellors were busy. And there was this young man, 19 years of age, Peter, and he came to me that night, and I'm glad he didn't ask me what my problems were, because I would have given him a mouthful. <laughs> but he said, what did you come forward for? Mm. And I told him in good Australian language what I came forward for, mm. you know. And I said, and I can use the word on television. It's, n it's not a bad word to use. And I just looked at him and I said, I want to become a bloody Christian. What do you think I'm here for? <laughs> you know, and, uh, and he opened his Bible. I said, I can't read running writing. And then he said this to me. He said, John 3, 16, for God so loved Ron Baker mm. that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ. Mm. And if Ron Baker believed in him, he would never perish but have eternal life. Wow. Mm. I've never forgotten it. Never, ever forgotten it. Mm. It's powerful. And that was just the beginning. That was just the beginning. And then all that followed that was... All hell broke loose. If people don't want to believe that Satan's alive and well, let me tell you, that night in my life, all hell broke loose. Because I had given my life now to the lovely Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, mm. who introduced me to his Father through the power of God, the Holy Spirit. Mm. Right? Satan didn't like that. He had me for 16 years. He controlled me. Now, the Son of God has claimed ownership. Mm. Claimed ownership. Yeah. And all hell broke loose. And the next 15 to 16 months, I went through sheer hell through the deliverance and everything until it came to 1961 and I was taken by an ambulance from Collaroy Plateau to Manly District Hospital. In an ambulance five mile an hour, I was to die. I was going through very, very bad withdrawal pains from drugs mm. and so forth, etc. They did an emergency operation. They put me in a straitjacket for three days and I went through another hell going through the th three, uh, th three days in the straitjacket. Yeah. And then on Good Friday morning, 1961 at 2 a.m., the presence of God came and flooded my inner being and a cigarette fell out of my mouth and my mouth was washed and my clan and I heard the audible voice of God say to me, I love you, 
I've set you free. And I came home from that hospital, never smoked since, never drank alcohol since, never been involved in witchcraft since, yeah. and have never done anything foul since or mm. dishonest. I was totally transformed. Mm. And I realized then what happened at the showground. I was born and forgiven, mm. but now I'm delivered and transformed. And that's what the Apostle Paul says about be ye transformed. It's a continuing process. Mm. And I've been transformed ever since. And I was a new man. Praise God. New man. And I've been that man ever since. That's great. So how does someone who doesn't want anything to do with God, who I guess is an atheist or mm. involved in witchcraft, become a Christian and then be transformed by Jesus? Well, you can only be transformed as you have that encounter with him. Mm. Right? You can't, no one can transform you. Even the best psychiatrist can't transform you. Mm. Even the best counsellor can't transform you. Yeah. But when you have that personal encounter with the lovely Lord Jesus mm. Christ, yeah. he is the only one who can transform you. Right. And I know, and I know, and I know mm. that he transformed my life. I don't care about theology. I don't care about the arguments mm. of whether I was a drunk or whether I was a druggie or whether I was into witchcraft. Mm. I know what he did in my life. And not only did he transform my life, he transformed my marriage, yeah. he transformed the life of my two children and everything. And they grew up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. We then are living today as Christ's followers. We're not religious people. Mm. I mean, I have a lot to do with religious people. Yeah. A lot of them are fruitcakes. <laughs> but we became followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And to become him, a follower of him, you live with him moment by moment, day by day. You breathe him. You talk to him. Mm. You're in his presence all the time, mm. day by day. So obviously Christ in your life has made such a great difference. Oh, yes. Oh, look, I mean, I was basically illiterate when I came to Christ. I could read road signs and do a few maths, but mm. I was taught to read and write at 32 years of age by a lovely Roman Catholic family who taught me how to read and write. Yeah. Then I had a speech therapist who taught me speech therapy for four years because as a child being belted and bashed, I had this very powerful speech impediment and I couldn't get two words together. And so for four years, she taught me how to speak. And that's why I've got the voice I've got today. I don't really need microphones. I mean, I've got so many levels that I can up the levels <laughs> if I want to. Yeah. I can preach to a crowd um, without a microphone. Yeah. But then when I realised that I could read and write, and after th I learnt speech therapy, mm. then I applied for Bible College in the Baptist Bible College of New South Wales, got accepted, but I had to drive buses at night because I had no money to put myself through. So I did the college course, 19 hours a day, including driving a full-time shift mm. at night for two years and graduated. Mm. Then got accepted for four years of theological training and also graduated. And then wrote a thesis on the subject that I knew a lot about, Is Satan a Reality, for my ordination. Mm. And it's been a great journey. There's no such thing as it can't be done. Mm. It can be done when God steps into your life. As I heard one man uh, a long time ago mm. say, a man's mind is like a parachute. If you pull the ripcord, it'll open. Very good. So I'm wondering... With the past that you've had and with the experience you've had, and you've sort of started to share a little bit about that, what has Christ done with you in for his kingdom? Well, first of all, when I trained in the college, I became a pastor mm -hmm. and I pastored uh, uh, my student church was uh, South Granville. And then my first church out of college was down at Warilla near Wollongong. Mm -hmm. And then I went up to Bondi Junction for my third church. And then as I went through my pastoral ministry, I found that God had given me different uh, abilities and different gifts, if you like. And then in 1975, I was set aside to do the work of an evangelist. And for the next 10 years, I travelled all over Australia and different parts of the world preaching the gospel. Mm. And then I went back into uh, a church in Brisbane and became a pastor again. And... Uh, when I went back into that church, that's when I became very, very strongly involved in spiritual warfare, training pastors and training church leaders, 
how to combat the spiritual warfare mm. and the devastation that Satan brings into the lives of individuals. Mm. Yes, I've enjoyed my ministry and I'm still enjoying it. Even at 81, I'm still involved in speaking to people, speaking at churches and speaking at conferences yeah. and, and mentoring pastors and uh, helping people that are in this trap of being caught up by the demonic activity of this world. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's powerful. So well, Christ is obviously using you in quite a big way oh, in the yes, kingdom. Yes. It's very exciting to hear. Yes. Uh, Could you tell is. us uh, some examples of how Christ is transforming lives today around you? Well, I, I, I could tell you many stories, but we don't have time. But I can tell you how he transformed one person's life completely. This per person came to me at Bondi Junction when I was there in the ministry, and this woman had this night, as she put it, had been raped by demons. And she came to me and she said, look, I need help. Now, a lot of people won't believe that that can happen, but it happened to this woman. And so she spent time with me and I saw the power of God gloriously transform her life and deliver her from mm -hmm from the power of darkness. Mm. I've seen that happen in many, many lives, mm. many, many lives. I've seen the healing power of God come and heal and restore people's lives. Mm. Yes, it's great, but it can only be done when Christ lives in us mm. and works through us. And that's the main thing. Mm. I, uh, that's the greatest message I've had is that he'll do it. See, Jesus never performed a miracle. A lot of people think that he did. He in one way, he did perform miracles. In another way, he didn't. He only did what he saw his father do. Right. And that's the same for me. I only do what I see my heavenly father do. Mm. And what the Lord Jesus Christ tells me to do through the ministry of God, the Holy Spirit. So is it possible that maybe Christ is just one way, not the only way? If there was another way, I would have found it long before I had an encounter with the lovely Lord Jesus. There's no other way. I've read widely, I've traveled widely, and I've talked to a lot of learned people, I've talked to a lot of ordinary people. There's no other way. He said of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. There's no other way. Mm. No other way. There's no other road to God. Mm. He's the only one. So for those who are watching who may not be interested in, in God or religion or Jesus, what would you say to people who, where you've come from? Because you've come from a life without God mm. and then you've experienced God and mm. he's changed your life. What would you say to the viewers who maybe are not really interested in God or not ready to take that step? Well, if you're sitting there on your lounge room now listening to what I'm saying, let me say this to you. Let me ask you a question, first of all. What have you tried? Have you tried alcohol? Have you tried drugs? Have you tried witchcraft? Have you broken out of one marriage relationship hoping that it would be better in the next marriage relationship? Have you tried gambling? What have you tried? Have you read all books about this and that? You've tried everything, haven't you? You know, you know in your own heart you've tried everything. And you know that you still haven't got that inner peace. You haven't been transformed. You haven't been delivered from that torment and bondage that you go through those lo lonely nights, those long nights when you're restless and you can't sleep. Let me assure you and the authority of the word of God that Jesus Christ, the lovely Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he is the only answer. And when, you're, when you come to have an encounter with him and your life is transformed, and you are totally delivered and totally forgiven and totally healed, you will be the person that God wants you to be, the person that I am today because of what he did for me. I'm sure there are parents watching as well who may have children who are far away from the Lord. What encouragement can you give our viewers that they're not too far from saving? Your children are never too far away. There's one thing that you have to do and you have the most powerful weapon that you can use and that is prayer. Pray for your children. If they've wandered away from the Lord, pray for them to come back. Remember the prodigal son story? 
The father waits. The father waits for the prodigal to come home. But pray the most powerful prayer. Don't pray that your child has been wicked and got on drugs or on alcohol. Don't pray that. Pray and claim them back for the Lord. Pray, because if you don't claim them back, Satan will have a field day. Just pray for them and claim them back to what they are in Christ Jesus. Ron, thank you so much for that. Parents, if you have children that are far away from the Lord, I hope that you are encouraged by what Ron has said to you today, that no one is too far from saving. Ron, next episode, we're going to be talking about spiritual warfare. Uh, I'm wondering if you can give us a broad vision of your ministry, what your ministry is, uh, how it got started. Well, basically, my ministry got started with um, something that was said to me one night um, when I was woken out of a deep sleep. And that was that I heard the audible words of God say to me, follow my son. And that happened about midnight, and then just on daybreak, I was awoken, awoken out of a deep sleep again to hear those words, you know, follow my son. And so that's when I knew I had to train for the ministry, and then I had to wait on God to show me what my ministries were. He showed me that my ministries were teaching people, uh, a ministry of being available to be used of him for delivering people out of bondage uh, from satanic warfare. And then he taught me also that he wanted me to be an evangelist. And then he also taught me that he wanted me to be a writer. And so in 1970, I began writing for newspapers, articles called The Christian Chat. Mm. And so they were very helpful because I was living in Bondi Junction at the time and there was a circulation of 39,000 papers each week. And then later on in Brisbane back in 1985 through to 1991, I was writing for four newspapers reaching over 500,000 people a week. Mm. And also I, at the time I was writing and preaching and teaching, I was also involved in prayer deliverance ministry with people with demonic activities. Mm. And I first became aware of this when my daughter was only nine years of age and I knew what God wanted me to do. And so since then, my ministry has been very fulfilled even now at my age of 81, I'm still very busy. Um, I've just finished writing my life story mm. and it'll be published this year. I think we're going to call it Just One in a Crowd. But in that book, there is intimate detail mm. about how God has used me along the journey mm. of ministry. And it's been a thrilling, thrilling, absolutely thrilling journey and exciting. And um, from nowhere to somewhere. Ron, I can't wait to next episode where you get to talk to us more about your ministry and more about spiritual warfare. I'm wondering as we close today, if you could pray for the viewers and pray for those who may be suffering in bondage. I'd just love to do that. Thank you. Okay, dear listeners, I'm going to pray for you. And uh, I know that as we pray, God is going to answer the prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of our lovely Lord Jesus Christ and in his divine authority and in the person and power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for all the viewers today that are watching this program that you will bring to them deliverance and forgiveness and an assurance that you are the one and only true God. Bless them, we pray. Just encourage them moment by moment. And may this be the beginning of a new day for them or a new night for them or a new walk for them. Father God, just gather them into your arms and just love them with only the love that you can love them with and give them the fulfilment and the assurance that you're the only one who can transform their lives. Amen. Amen. Bron, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing your ministry and your life with us. Mm. Cool. Uh, viewers, I hope that you were encouraged today from Ron Baker's testimony that, that Christ is able to transform lives. He has the power to do that. And I hope that you're encouraged, uh, even if those that you know and love are far away from the Lord, that as Jesus has said in Matthew 19, 26, that nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for joining us on Transformed. Until next time, may God bless you.